What's going on, my beautiful people? Damocles here. And to show you guys that I know what I'm talking about, I hit Masters yesterday with like a 78% win rate in like 84 games playing basically only carries. Um, so, you know, goes with the name. Uh, this game is going to be all about Cinderace, and this video is going to be all about Cinderace. I'm showing you how I play Cinderace. I'm playing him in the jungle this game, so hopefully you learn um, about Cinderace, and hopefully you learn about uh, my jungle ideology throughout the course of this game. Uh, this is going to be a upper ultra game, I believe. I want to say ultra five just before I hit masters, um, but I make a couple mistakes, and there's some interesting stuff that goes on, so I think it's worth, uh, worth watching. Um, I take Cinderace in the jungle so that I can get online earlier and because I think that you need to have Cinderace on your team at a high level, at like high ranking games, and nobody on my team was playing Cinderace, uh, so I rock him in the jungle. I love playing him in the jungle, it just makes it so I can level up faster and I can impact a bunch of lanes, and I'm confident I can take out whatever other jungler uh, the enemy team has just on skill alone. Um, so this way I'm going to be able to go and apply pressure to all different kinds of lanes uh, with his uh, range damage. Um, I always go blaze kick and I always go faint and for items I would suggest going muscle band 100% um, go scope lens 100% and then even though I run floatstone in this game I would recommend buddy barrier because it is really really busted and people will figure that out soon once they get to a higher rank um, you can see as soon as I finish my initial clear I immediately am roaming around looking for potential overextended lanes but they're both playing pretty safe so now I immediately go and I look and I say alright let me see if I can counter jungle this haunter because I know at this point in the game I can put him in the dumpster and so I find him out here I chase him down because I know he has no escapes I know he can't fight me and he knows he can't fight me so initially we're starting off this game really really solid and that's what you need to be doing when you're playing jungle you need to look at those jungle matchups and say hey if I find this dude I can put him super far behind and that's what I do with Haunter um, then I roam up top and because Cinderace has range, you're really easily able to pressure people off of towers, uh, especially if they are like a melee character like a Crustle or a Zeraora. So I'm up here continuously diving, trying to put the enemy behind, trying to steal some of their camps while allowing my team to score, which gives them an XP lead. And then I take uh, some lane tax just for, you know, good tidings, of course. By the way, I know some of these people that I'm playing with. I know most of the people I'm playing with, so please don't go and do that in random games and put your teammates behind. They know I'm there to carry the game, so they don't have a problem with me taking some of their farm because um, they know I just need to get Cinderace and get online, which I have now. So now I'm picking up Blaze Kick. Blaze Kick gives you an automatic crit. It uh, gives you a little bit of a gap close. It gives you a little bit of a pushback and... Possibly, most importantly, it gives you an attack speed buff when it's done. So you really, really, really want to pick up Blaze Kick. In my opinion, I just like it a lot more than uh, than Pyro Ball. I do not understand how Haunter lives here. I really don't. I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. He should be dead. I'm assuming maybe he got healed by a Pollen Puff. I don't know. But maybe if someone in the comments sees why. I think he used full heal to get the, the burn off. But I don't know how he lived health wise. He goes in on my teammates. And again, I'm staying around the outside because I'm Cinderace. I'm not going to go and just needlessly get attacked. Um, but I know that I'm way ahead of them right now. I mean, look, I'm level 8. Eldegoss level 5. And that just comes from diving, farming, and scoring. Immediately what you should be doing is going for Dreadnought. Uh, I try to go for Dreadnought. 99% of all games uh, because Dreadnought is the most important objective on the map uh, bar none aside from Zapdos. It will give you massive level advantages. I know a lot of people like Rotom, but you need to think about it like this. XP is forever, baby. Those points up top, if they score 100 points, whatever. If we are able to get three levels of experience from killing three Dreadnoughts, I do not care if they got 100 points top lane from Rotom. It doesn't matter because I'm going to be able to smash them into oblivion for the rest of the game. And that's what happens here, honestly. Um, here, I have 25 points, but Charizard has 35, so I let him score it. Um, just to talk about Faint a little bit, I think you should always pick up Faint. Faint makes it so uh, you go invincible for a short period of time. You can dodge like a bunch of... I mean, you can basically dodge any ability if you time it correctly. And it makes so your next three basic attacks after you Faint uh, heal you a slight bit. So it's just a really, really important ability to have to make some nice outplays. And especially when you're playing uh, carry like this, you want to have that kind of safety. You can use it to outplay Gengars. You can use it to escape. It's just... It's just so good. Um, so here I pop my Unite move, I get two. Cinderace's Unite move is nice. It has really, really long range and honestly stupid broken tracking. It like 
chases people forever. So um, try and use it to like snipe people away or if you just need a breather. Um, but regardless, we're pretty firmly in the lead here. And um, something that I just want to talk about briefly aside from, oh wait, hold on. So watch this Gengar outplay. He, he messes up here. Once I see that he uses Hex, if you see a Gengar use Hex, boom, right there, I know immediately, all right, you're mine, son. Because once his Hex is on cooldown, if he hasn't used it on a sludge target, that little that little purple blob, he is Dunion Rings. So you need to make sure that you're watching people's cooldowns. If you see Gengar use Sludge Bomb and miss, kill him. If you see him use Hex and miss, kill him. If he uses Hex on anybody that isn't sludge, take him out of the sky. That's the only way to deal with the little purple monster and you gotta abuse him early and often so that he cannot get uh, get ahead and, and do some damage to your team. Again, I rotate down for uh, Dreadnaw because it's super important and we push them off. I don't, I think they actually might get it here because we misplay. Let me see. Yeah, we do. See, we got out of position there because we started chasing them and they snuck it from behind, which stinks because we are firmly in the lead here, right? And so you can already see I was four levels up on this Eldegoss before, and they just got Dreadnought, and now I'm only like two levels up or three levels up. Like, this type of stuff matters. You should always, always, always be fighting for Dreadnought. Um, and then if you're at the carry, you want to be at range at all times. You want to be kiting back. It, you never want to be going like straight towards people. You want to go and kite to the side. What, what I mean by kite is like walk slowly away from them. Always be outputting damage from, you know, the back line, right? You want to do a front to back team fight, meaning you have your front liners or people that are tankier than you in the front of you and the enemy team has to get through them to get to you. And this is why, look at right here. I mess up here. I split away from Charizard and Snorlax. I probably should have kited up. And I, even though I dodge the Gengar uh, Sludge Bomb, I don't dodge the Unite because my dodge is on cooldown and me and Snorlax are split up. So they end up getting, uh, you know, a bunch of XP off of this. Thankfully, my team is rotating bottom and they go and they clean this up. But that was, uh, you know, that was a misplay on my part. We got, I got too excited because, you know, I'm like so close to getting master at this point. And I'm like, oh, we're stomping these dudes right now. Nothing can stop me and except for, you know, three Unite moves. So uh, little, little bit of a misplay there. Now I go back to farm my jungle. And just to talk about the jungle farm real quick, in 99% of the games, you want to be going and farming your jungle on cooldown to be able to maintain an XP lead. Uh, in this specific game, we have an exception, in my opinion, and that is I took out top lane super early, I took out bottom lane super early. So the enemy doesn't have a lot of safety to retreat to, and so we took control of their side of the jungle very early on. And I had a major uh, level lead on their jungler, Haunter, so I know I can fight him in the jungle if I need to. What this means is I'm trying to keep the pressure on and prevent them from being able to leave their base. I'm trying to prevent them from exerting any amount of, uh, of uh, control over the map. So what we were doing was killing all of their jungle creeps, killing all the middle jungle creeps, so that even if they want to get back in the game, they can't. Um, and so the, the sacrifice is that I don't go and farm my jungle camps as often as I would like, but I go and I make sure that they can't get back in the game if that makes sense. Um, and so uh, that's kind of the trade-off. Now, once I backed, of course, I went and, you know, uh, farmed it up, but just something to think about in the in the future. Try and think about it from can't let them get back in the game mindset instead of just a I need to do X, Y, and Z mindset. Now here, we are firmly in the lead. All we have to do, we don't have to do Zapdos, we just have to prevent them from getting it. So I'm able to draw out, uh, I believe, two Ignite moves here. I know uh, Charizard wants to murder me and there's nothing I can do to him, so I just run away, get him away from my team, and then I come back to uh, clean up the fight because I know now that his Unite move is down, he's got absolutely nothing for me and either does Eldegoss. So again, this is something a lot of people don't do in their normal matches as well. Play keep away from Zapdos if you're in the lead. There's no reason to risk a 100% win rate, which is what we have right now. We have a 100% chance to win if the game ends right now. There's no reason to drop that to a 50% chance by going for Zapdos. If both teams are attacking Zapdos, it's a coin flip. You know what I mean? It's an, it's an absolute coin flip. So why would you cut your chances of winning in half? All you have to do is make it so they can't get it. That's it. And you only have to do it for like a minute and 30 seconds. If you can prevent them from doing it for a minute and 30 seconds, it's a wrap and you win the game. And that's what ends up happening here. Um, so I go and I come in from the side. 
I, again, I'm maintaining range. I'm trying to use the bush as cover so that I, I, they don't have vision of me at all times. And I'm sitting here and I'm waiting because I'm just making sure nobody can go and sneak it. And so this Krussel jumps out. Obviously, he gets the business, and that's going to be it. Basically, uh, they, they get squad wiped. We don't go for Zapdos, and we end up winning the game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about just my jungle ideology and about Cinderace. If not, if you have questions, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you like seeing more stuff like this at like a higher level. Um, and, uh, you know... I hope I covered everything you want. We're masters now. I can do guides on anything. I can do tier lists, items, you name it. Just let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, we end up doing pretty well right here. I think this was, I mean, I want to say this is like Ultra 5 or Ultra 4 going into Ultra 5 just before Master. Uh, but I got a bunch of Master gameplay too. So um, that's going to be it for me, guys. Adamocles out.